Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jibrex and this is Why don't we shoot nuclear waste into space by channel Kuzguzad in a nutshell. Yes, in the Kuzguzad video, I fucking love this. Anything space, especially space related, in science space related, is just fucking awesome. So, why don't we shoot nuclear waste in space? First of all, sending anything in space is not efficient. I mean, it's, effic it's more efficient now than it was before, but it's not efficient per se. Right? I mean, in today's world, uh, what is the efficient airborne thing? It's just basically, uh, beside, uh, you know, uh, pandemics, what is the most efficient airborne thing? Airplanes, right? I mean, you do get occasional crashes here and there, but, uh, after, you know, how many flights happen every day? Tens of thousands and God knows what, right? And among them, there are few crashes, few problems here and there. Compare that to space, right? It's not even close. So, uh, even like, you know, forget everything, ask yourself, okay, you're going to space right now on SpaceX, Blue Origin, whatever. You would like, oh, fuck yeah, I'll take my risk, but that would be your first thought. I'll take my risk because you know there is a risk trying to sit on the rocket. Even though probably nothing's gonna happen, but yeah. So imagine that like you're gonna take a nuclear waste, fucking nuclear waste, that this word, I mean, they removed the word N, you know, letter N from the, you know, yeah, MRI, right? is NMRI, nuclear, there is a nuclear in there, right? But they knew that if you put N there, people are not gonna go inside the machine, right? So they removed that. So the nuclear we are talking about. So if you're gonna put that in some rocket and the rocket blows up, where is that, all that waste? It's all over in the atmosphere. Fuck me, we are, lots of people are screwed at that point. And uh, even if we ignore that part, like, okay, that's an engineering problem, maybe we can figure that out, just like we did with the airplane, sure. Right now, I think it costs around $10,000 per, per kilo or per pound or something like that. Maybe it's coming down because of the, you know, reusable rocket thing that SpaceX has created. But even that is not, it hasn't become normal yet. So right now it's somewhere around $10,000, right? So you're gonna, how much waste you're gonna put in space with that kind of money, right? So it's not just, people say, why not just shoot all the fucking clutter and all the waste into space, you know, into the sun, not even space, into the sun. Yeah, how we, uh, how we go, where are you going to get money for that? So there are many issues like that, but this is just the surface of it, right? So obviously, because is going to go into detail about what is going to be the issue and not why you can't take certain like uranium waste and things like that in space. That is going to be one of the most common one. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are going to be more technical issues there as well, but yeah, let's watch it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, so I know which type of videos to react to more. Uh, you know, I love science, anything science related, and you, uh, only two channels I think I know so far is just Kharsgazar and Vsauce. And I sometimes do Vsauce, but mostly Kharsgazar video. So comment down any science video you know of that you want me to react to. Alright, let's watch it. The limited edition 12,023 Kharsgazar calendar is here. Every purchase enables us to make videos free for everyone. So get one for yourself or a loved one and be a sponsor of the following video. Eternal gratitude from us and all the burbs around the world. Here in the Kurzgesagt Labs, we test very important ideas to see what happens when you blow things up or play with black holes. Many of you suggested that we look into an idea that sounds reasonable. Shooting nuclear waste into space. It's one of those concepts that seems like an easy fix for one of the main problems with nuclear energy. But it turns out this idea is not just bad, but horribly bad, and it gets worse the longer you think about it. Why is that? What is nuclear waste? Nuclear waste is a fuzzy term and comes in categories which vary from country to country. But in general, there are three broad levels. 90% is low-level nuclear waste, tools, gloves or trash used at a nuclear facility that could be weakly contaminated with some short-lived radioactivity. This stuff is generally safe for normal disposal. 7% is intermediate-level nuclear waste, mostly materials that have been in close proximity to a reactor core long enough to become dangerously radioactive. With proper handling, it's either safely buried or melted down and mixed into glass or concrete and stored deep underground. So 97% of nuclear waste is similar to toxic byproducts from other industries. Not great, not terrible. We can handle it. Mm. The remaining 3% is where our problems begin. High-level nuclear waste is very concentrated spent fuel taken out of a reactor core. 
formerly uranium, it's now made of various dangerous and often highly radioactive elements. As a bonus, it's also incredibly hot and not easy to handle at all. This is what we want to shoot into space. All in all, around 440 active nuclear reactors create about 11,000 tons of high-level nuclear waste each year. Since 1954, we've accumulated 400,000 tons of dangerous radioactive waste. Most countries are dealing with it by not dealing with it and kicking the can towards the future. 4,000 tons, let's just be, say like, okay, you can half the value because it's so, so much business. So let's say, five, holy shit, let's just say $4,000. That's just like $4,000 per kilo, right? So that's like 400,000 tons. So that's like 400 million, right? Uh, right, 400 million kilos. Uh, multiply by, you know, 4,000. So that's, holy shit, that's a lot of, nobody's gonna spend that money. Great, so let's launch it into space. According to scientists, space is big and nobody lives there. So it seems perfect for yeeting away this mess. There are a few tiny problems though. Problem one, stuff ain't cheap. Even though spaceflight is getting more affordable, it's still extremely expensive. Just to get something into low Earth orbit costs on average about $4,000 per kilogram. Mm, it Putting is that into perspective, it costs about $1,600 to mine, separate and fabricate one kilogram of nuclear fuel. So I guess a few years ago it was 10,000. So I guess this uh, newer technology of space and things brought it down to 4,000. So let's, you know, I said like 10,000 to 4,000. So if it's already 4,000, let's say it's like two or 3,000 dollars per kilo. You can get that low if you want to spend, you know, put that much thing in space. I mean, that's a lot of business, right? People, well, cost can come down. But even at that cost, it's like, uh, you know, what, around a trillion or something? Nobody's going to spend that. So launching waste into space has suddenly made nuclear fuel for reactors way more expensive and greatly increased the cost of the electricity they produce. To launch one reactor's worth of nuclear waste would cost at least $100 million per year. To deal with all the 440 operational nuclear power plants, high-level nuclear waste would cost some $44 billion per year for space launch before packaging, transport and security costs are added. Okay, let's pretend we don't care. Currently, this is we year couldn't not shoot total. nuclear waste into space even if we wanted to. There just aren't enough rockets. In 2021, we saw a I record 135 yeah. launches into space. If we repurposed each of those rockets and filled them all with nuclear waste, the total amount that could be lifted into a low Earth orbit, which is the closest orbit above the atmosphere, yeah, I didn't even thought of that about the rocket. First of all, people need to understand like very tiny portion of the rocket on top is usable. Everything else is just fuel. So how many rockets you're gonna need just to send that shit, right? And 44 billion, that's just the every year cost, right? Not all the things that you accumulated. Like he said, like what was that, 400,000 ton or something? If you wanna send all of that, like I said, it would be around trillion or something. Is nearly 800 tons. We'd need at least 14 times more rockets to handle just today's nuclear waste let alone get rid of the hundreds of thousands of tons in temporary storage. We would need to create entire new space industries to keep up with the demand for giant, toxic space trash trucks. And it gets worse. Problem two, space is hard. <laughs> we go. only made the calculation for low Earth orbit, where we send most of our rockets and satellites. Littering the space around Earth with thousands of casks of spent nuclear fuel would be a nightmare for space junk management and satellite collision avoidance. Worse still, at this altitude, there's still a little bit of atmosphere causing a tiny bit of drag, so we might have nuclear waste raining down from space within just a few years. Experts would call this... And not to mention all the, you know, uh, space contamination, right, radiations and things coming from space, which is a lot. Our, our ozone layer kind of protects us from that. In this case, all those would interact with this waste and might create a problem in the future with that one either, right? I mean, it could, uh, you know, interact with it and just fuck with its, uh, you know, orbital speed and shit like that. So you can put it in orbit. If you want to throw something in space, you really have to throw it in space, like with high velocity, you know, out of like even geosynchronous orbit. A huge problem. Clearly, we have to launch our waste further. If we wanted to send it to, perhaps, the moon, we either need way more rockets or we need to build much bigger ones, making it even more expensive. 
a single Saturn V, the rocket used by the Apollo program, which cost around 1.5 billion adjusted for inflation per launch, could get about 43.5 tons from the Earth to the Moon. So we'd need about 260 Saturn V rocket launches every year. And of course, using the Moon as target practice for nuclear waste-tipped rockets kind of makes a huge mess. So maybe don't aim for anything. Space is empty. Do we really need a target? Shooting waste in any random direction is, you guessed it, also a bad idea. Orbits are loops, which means they have a tendency to come back to where they started. <laughs> Put enough in the sky in random directions, and you'll get one back eventually. So we'd want to launch our nuclear waste. <laughs> I can only imagine Homer Simpson's like, oh, there you go. We're done with that shit. After, what, 80 or something years later, right, it comes back and hit us in our ass. <laughs> deep into space, which means we need even bigger rockets that would be even more expensive. Not that we would be completely safe then. Earth might run into these interplanetary caskets at some time in the far future and experience a pretty meteor shower made from radioactive dust. Okay, how about we shoot it into the sun? Ironically, the sun is pretty hard to hit. While the sun has very strong gravity, everything on Earth is moving with respect to the sun, including the rockets that we launch, meaning a rocket would have to cancel out all the orbital motion it has around the sun so it can stop orbiting and fall in. Because of this, it's actually easier to launch a rocket entirely out of the solar system than it is to launch it into the sun. But to do either of these things, we need even bigger rockets, probably the biggest we've ever built. Hmm, nothing works. The thing is, it gets even worse. Problem three, rockets go brrr. Rocket engineering <laughs> has explode. taken huge steps since the Apollo era. We've made them relatively safe. We've mostly replaced the toxic explosive cancer fuels of the past decades with much saner mixes of liquid oxygen and hydrogen or kerosene. The newest designs even land themselves so that they can be reused. And yet, out of the 146 launches in 2021, there were 11 failures. Which means that a sizable number of our rockets carrying high-level radioactive waste would be exploding on the launch pad or, in the worst case, disassembling at high altitude or crashing from hypersonic speeds. Each failure would be at least equivalent to a mini Chernobyl, but instead of being contained under a slab of concrete, spread throughout the atmosphere. Radioactive particles could make their way to faraway places by riding on the winds. Most would fall into the ocean, but some would land on the inhabited parts of the world. They could cover farmlands and get concentrated into our food or enter our water supply. Which is, well, bad. Imagine regular large-scale nuclear disasters happening. People wouldn't be happy. Conclusion and opinion part. Nuclear waste is scary, but the fear of it and horrible ideas like shooting it into space reveals how bad we are at understanding risk, because the largest amounts of radioactive elements like uranium and radon are actually released by coal. Burning millions of tons of coal each year leaves ash as a waste product that includes about 36,000 tons of radioactive materials. Less radioactive than high-level nuclear waste, but there's also a lot more of it and it's handled way less carefully. Some of this ash is caught by filters, but most is simply pushed back into leaky mines, shoved into piles exposed to the wind, or poured into ponds that regularly spill into rivers and lakes. Living within 1.6 kilometers of an ash pile increases your cancer risk up to 2,000 times over the acceptable limit. And this is on top of other toxic chemicals like heavy metals and, of course, their massive CO2 emissions. And yet, while nuclear energy is flawed and its current form may only be a transitory technology, nuclear power plants are a harder sell than coal. Nuclear waste and the lack of willingness to deal with it are a real issue. It's not insurmountable, though. There are good methods to handle it, like burying it deep underground or reprocessing some of it into new fuel. But however we ultimately deal with this issue, we hope one thing is clear. Shooting nuclear waste into space is one of the worst ideas ever. <laughs> Research this is not a new thing. People have been saying that about, you know, uh, all the shit that we accumulate or all the, uh, you know, waste and things. Not just nuclear, any waste, right? Ozones are clogging up, everything's clogging up. What should we do with all the clutter we are accumulating? Let's throw it in the sun. Like that's, 
yeah, this is not gonna work, right? This is the problem. And like you said, like, you know, nuclear waste can be manageable if you do it right. And that's where the problem lies, the management. Lots of people say, or any, it doesn't matter how big of a government, how rich government you are, any government is not efficient. And this is the problem, right? And nobody go, goes into the government and just like, you know, try to, you know, make it more efficient like corporations were. Corporations are efficient. You would say like, oh, corporations are efficient, then why are they making all this waste? Because it costs them less money, right? Because regulatory bodies don't give a shit, right? Uh, because there are no, you know, things don't get passed in Congress that force them to be more efficient. Corporation can be efficient if it profits them, right? And they can be really fucking efficient. Well, government, their whole job is to basically make everything better, right? not caring about money at that, the way corporate does. Corporate's uh, whole thing is to make money. That's not the job of government. So government can be efficient if they really want. But government don't, right? That's the problem. So all the issues we have, we can manage that, but we don't. There was a video, real life floor video I saw in the Pacific Ocean. They're just piling up all this fucking nuclear waste that they have been accumulating for years since the nuclear testing. And it's about to spill or something like, holy shit, this is ridiculous. Watching this crazy thing, conducting all of these important tests, and of course, creating this video took us around 2000 hours, which is insane for a YouTube video. And we couldn't do it without you. If you like what you just saw, you can continue your science journey with one of our products. They're true pieces of Kurzgesagt you can take home and touch. And they're the best way to support this channel. Like our limited edition human era calendar that will Yeah, we will uh, go to original video page link and support this channel. I Kurzgesagt is a great, great channel. Nearing 20 million subscribers, that's good. So yeah. Uh, shooting things into space is really not cheap. There's a reason why Apollo program was the last program up until now. Right now, the because of SpaceX and things, space anything space related is getting you know more and more better. Uh, Apollo program was last, and there was a reason behind it. I mean, I know we've done you know Cassini and small things here and there, right? Uh, Horizon and uh, different things, but that's not compared to a major program like Apollo because it's space is hard, right? And like he says, rockets go brr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this was great. Alright people, that was why do we shoot nuclear waste into space by channel Kurskazar in a nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.